What's up my beast fires? Beast Fire One here. Welcome to 16 personalities. This is a personality test, but it's not just any personality test. This is one that's had years of, of psychometric research and it has multiple studies based on it. And uh, I, this seems to be the most trusted one that people go to. Uh, you might have seen Jack or Mark play this, but I was actually inspired by MS Arcade, which you could check out. She's over here in the top right, top left. Uh, <laughs> you go check out that. So basically, you do this and you and you get told what kind of person, you, what kind of personality you get. It's like divided into different categories. So let's not waste any more time. Let's take the test. Free personality test. Nearest type explorer. Takes less than 12 minutes. Answer honestly, even if you don't like the answer. Try not to leave any neutral answers. So if it's in the middle, then you have to try to stray away from that. You have to either agree a little bit or, dis or disagree a little bit. Uh, you find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's I'm not the kind of person who goes up to people uh, and says like, "Oh hi, I'm this, I'm so and so." I, I wait for people to come to me, which seems which doesn't seem, which seems like um, it seems pretty, you know, not me. But you know, I'm I'm a shy guy. I mean, like recording here at home, it's where I feel safe. But <laughs> talking to other people. Ugh, I just wait for other people to come to me. I'm just I'm gonna say uh, uh, the middle of disagree there You often get so lost in thoughts that you ignore or forget your surroundings um Not not really. I'm still I, I, I Usually do I think a lot about stuff and I try to to Focus on the things around me as well just to kind of get my mind off things but I am really focused when I get focused into something I really get focused so I would say, I would say a little bit agree. You try to respond to emails as soon as possible and cannot stand a messy inbox. Um, I could stand a messy inbox, I, I just can't stand when, you know, I have new messages and I don't read them. Um, I don't usually use the mark as red, mark all as red feature just because, you know, I, I need to read every email. So, I'm gonna say a little bit agree there. You find it easy to stay relaxed and focused even when there is some pressure. No, absolutely not. When there is something that is on my mind, I think about it all the time. I lose sleep over it. Um, so I'm going to say disagree on that one. You do not usually initiate conversations. Yes, agree. <laughs> I would wait for people to talk to me. And that, that's, again, that seems uh, like a, like a D-bag move, but it's, it's what I do. And because I'm a shy person, I can't help that. You rarely do something out of sheer, just out of sheer curiosity. If it, if it uh, intrigues me enough, uh, if it's stupid and it's something I know I could do later on, and I need, I can't, I, I can absolutely wait to get to that. Then uh, no, I won't do it. So I'm gonna say, you rarely do something out of sheer curiosity. I'm gonna say in the middle of that. Next one. You feel superior to other people? No, absolutely not. I, I, on, talking from a perspective, I do not feel better than other people do just because um, people have worse lives than me and people should not be treated like su superior to one another. It, it just seems like it seems like a really, uh, really bad thing to do. So I must say disagree on that one. Hard disagree. Uh, being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Um, I think it it, it 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 goes together with that. I'm adaptable once I organize. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Um, once once I'm organized, I'm able to adapt. So, eh, I must say I must say I disagree. I must say a little bit of disagree. You're usually highly motivated and energetic. I mean, yeah, half the time. Uh, what you see on camera is not like who I am really. And I mean, and it's in a sense of like you know how I feel all the time. What you see on camera is just like me trying, me being you know uh, upbeat for the camera and upbeat for YouTube. And it, um, when I want to share something that's really personal or really you know that that means a lot to me, then I then I say it to you guys. I don't want you guys just to see the the uh, YouTube. Uh, personality side of me. I want you to see the real me as well, which is which is what I said in my last vlog. So I am. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say just a little bit agree. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I care for a lot for people. I care for their well-being and stuff like that. Uh, I I want if I'm with other people, I care about their safety first rather than mine because you know if something happens to them then. I, I would I would be very 
I would be very traumatized. I'd be very sad. Uh, so I'm agree on I'm a hard agree on that. Just agree so much. Uh, you often feel as if you have to justify yourself to other people. I mean, I feel like I need. I feel like I think I talked about this before, but I feel like I need like recognition from people because I I usually I don't know what I'm like to other people because they don't tell me like upright. I always wonder that in my head, like the people who I've lost contact with or I don't talk to as much, I just wonder what they think of me as a person or, you know, if we've had bad relations in the past, you know, maybe they're willing to forgive me. And I always think that and I never really ask up front because I don't want, because it seems like it seems very selfish, but I feel like I feel like I, I need some self validation. I need some confirmation that I'm I'm doing good to I'm I'm doing good and I'm doing I'm being a good person towards them and yeah so you have to justify yourself to other people uh, no I don't have to justify myself I, I just feel like I need justification from, from other people your home and work environments are quite tidy eh, if you take a look at my desk here it's fairly meh I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I disagree on that one <laughs> uh, just just because you know I'm I'm not the tidiest person around I'm the messiest person around just you know if something gets too messy, then I then I snap. Uh, you do not mind bearing, being at the center of attention. I mean, when it comes down to it, it depends on what it is. Again, um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say disagree on that one, just because, you know, just, like I'm not the kind of person to start to start something. I'm not the type of person to start conversations, like I said before. So, uh, hard, just a little bit of disagree there. You consider yourself more practical than creative. I mean, I do have a certain way. A certain style of doing things I whenever I see something that I know how to do very well and people other people don't know I tend to you know correct them or whatever but being creative is like I get to try new things and being and once I get that down I could be more practical with that so I guess hard disagree there I, I mean there's a lot of things I still have to try out you know people can rarely upset you Mmm, uh, that's I don't think that's true. Like I'm I I am a very I'm a, I'm a kind of sensitive person And so rarely upset me. Maybe I'm gonna say a little bit disagree Just cuz you know, I, I I I have a lot of emotions is what I'm trying to say your travel plans are usually well thought out I don't no, I'm not <laughs> I don't try I don't plan trips either whenever I go hang with my friends I'm not I'm not the one to like oh come over to my house or we're gonna go here uh, they they do it for me so I would say disagree <laughs> it is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings in a sense kind of I mean if people are going people are people go through depression a lot and like there's a difference between depression and sadness but I can understand like the like their pain that they go through um, not it. It may not necessarily be the, the situation they're going through, but if I could place myself in their shoes for a little bit and give them the comfort that they need, then it, it's all good from there. I could. I'm. I'm more of a comforter, and not the person who. Not the person who. Who gets sad or gets depressed. But I must say, I. I I'm. I'll, I'm going. I'm going to agree. I'm stuttering a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, your mood can change very quickly. I'm gonna say a little bit of agree on that one, uh, just because you know I, I again I think about a lot of stuff. I'm gonna be reiterating a lot of points here, but my my, my brain it, it it works around. In a discussion, truth should be more important than people's sensitivities. Absolutely, if you're not honest with yourself, how can you be honest with other people? So I'm gonna agree on that one. You rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. No, no, <laughs> I I think about that constantly like I said before my brain is working all the time I'm thinking about a lot of stuff and I'm wondering how people think of me and I sometimes I get sad because like based on my past relations relations with them I I'm I might think I'm a horrible person to them when in reality you know maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm not so bad <laughs> so I disagree with that your work style is closer to random energy spikes than to methodical and organized approach Mmm, sometimes. If I have an idea in my head, then I'll, I'll be like, oh, I, I, need to write, I need to do this right now. But if it's more like a, a long run thing, like, 
you know, uh, financial goals or like, I don't know, uh, a job or, or whatever, my dream career, then that, then that takes longer. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, I'm gonna say agree a little bit. You're often envious of other, others. Envious? In, in what sense envious? Like, they have a better life than me or they, they have things figured out more? Uh, kind of, at this point, you know, at the, at this, at the time of recording this, I don't have a job, and I also, like, I also haven't done things that other people have done that I should have done a long time ago. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say agree. I'm gonna say mostly agree. An interesting book or a video game is often better than a social event. <laughs> um, it, that, nah. I mean, I like to play video games. I like to have my alone time, uh, and, re and playing video games or reading a book, but I th those times when I want to spend time with my friends, I spend time with my friends, uh, and, and and I have that fun time together. But when it, when I'm alone and I want to have you know just just some nice relaxation, I play a video game or read a book. So I'm gonna say agree on that one. A little bit agree. Sorry, friends. <laughs> Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. Hmm. Having a plan is good, but there's always that little thing that deviates the plan from its, you know, original, like, goal or whatever. Have a plan of, like, you know, with my plan, like, my plan, having two videos a day uploaded on this channel is really hard, and then something within that plan goes awire, like, personal problem happens, or something, uh, or something in the world happens or whatever that I can't control, then that becomes a hard thing to control so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say agree on that one but it, it, de it really depends on your situation you rarely get carried away by fantasies and ideas i mean i've it's all it's all right to fantasize it, it's not wrong to want something it's just that if you want it to happen then you have to do it you have to you have to initiate that, which, you know, as I said before, I'm not the one to do that, but if it's something I really care about, then I will. So, uh, I'm gonna say agree. You often find yourself lost in thought when you are walking in nature. I mean, nature, nature is a great place to really find, like, think about <laughs> life, life experiences, life choices. Uh, I often do that. Like, I was, I was out camping and I look up at the stars and it's just so beautiful. Um, and... I think about a lot of a lot of things more so than I do now, so I'm gonna say agree on that one. If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start worrying if you said something wrong. Usually, I mean, if they say explicit, explicitly that they're doing something or whatever, they, you know, they could be lying or or something, but I usually trust them. So I'm gonna say a little bit agree. I've been agreeing with most of these. Jeez. As a parent, you would rather see see your child grow up kind than smart. Yeah, above all else, you should treat others with respect. It's not something, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not something that should be a second thought. Pay, paying respects to others or being respectful towards others, sorry, <laughs> being respectful towards others should be like natural instinct. You do not let other people influence, influence your actions. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say disagree and I'm gonna say a little bit agree on that one. So, cause, um, when you're when you're trying to make it in the world, you usually like go with other people or try to be like other people. But it really should be about yourself. You should make the decisions for yourselves and how you should live your life should be up to you, but you should know what the right decisions are and you wouldn't really know how to do that by you know, without looking at other people, right? If you, you were just confined by yourself, then you would never know really know right from wrong. So I'm gonna say, like mostly agree, but not fully. Your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events. Uh, not really. I mean, what's happening right now, probably not. So I'm gonna say that, but my dreams are usually are like the what ifs of, of like my life in general. It's not, it's not really, it's never really, the real world stuff, like in the news. If, if I see something on the news, I wouldn't really dream about it that night, so yeah. It does not take you much time to start getting involved in your social activities at your new workplace. I mean, I don't have a job, but the first one I, the, f the only one I had uh, was doing retail, which, which unfortunately closed down like a year later. 
but social activities they have like social events there. I mean, I've, I've talked to many people at that point and it's usually when whenever there's like social activities like that, it's usually like a few months into into my work period. So uh, I'm gonna say agree because I like to hang out with new people. Uh, I like to hang out with new people, but not talk to them. <laughs> uh, once they talk to me first, then I, then I like to hang out with them. You are more of a natural improviser than a careful planner. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do things. I do things instinctively. I do things on the spot, uh, and like like right now, I, I'm improvising. Uh, you know my my dialogue. Like it's not. It, I, I'm saying what I truly mean, but I don't have a script in front of me telling me what to really say. So do you get what I mean? I like improv. <laughs> your emotions control you more than you control them. There has to be mm, there has to be some control of your emotions. So like self control. I mean, if you want to be sad all the time, then no one's really gonna stop you. But then you're just gonna be sad all the time. And but and for some people, it's not that it's not that easy. You just you know stop being sad. But you have, you have to understand that like things get better from here on out. You know you'll find a job, you'll find like a significant other, you'll find something that makes you happy. You'll always you always find that. You enjoy going to social events that involve dress up or role playing. Role play activities. Heck yeah, LARPing, let's go boys. <laughs> no, but role play role play being like I guess mm, being, you know, like playing playing a character or whatnot. You're like, yeah, I like that kind of stuff. You often spend time exploring unrealistic and impractical yet intriguing ideas. That goes back to the fantasizing thing. Like I, I always do the what ifs and what if I, what, what could I do if I had this or whatever. Then, yeah, I'll agree a little bit. You would rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. I'd say yeah. Like I said before, improv, improv is something that you know is a spur of the moment, and I tend to do things at the spur of the moment. You are a relatively reserved and quiet person. I mean, around friends I'm not, but when I'm with new people, then yeah. I'm gonna say a little bit disagree, but just just to get a balance out. <laughs> I've been saying agree to most of these, but uh, I, have to, I have to draw the line somewhere. If you had a business, you would find it very difficult to fire loyal but underperforming employees. I'm gonna say disagree because if they're they're if they're loyal, if they you know if they're on your good side, but they don't do jack squat <laughs> during like their work period, then it it sorry man, then you have to go. Yeah, that, that's simple as that. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence. Yeah. I mean, people have that thought all the time, like, what's our purpose in life and what do we really want to do with our lives? But it really comes down to, b back to that question before, like, you just have to do it. You just have to f go out there and find what you're meant to do and explore uh, different, different careers and different opportunities that interest you. And until you, f until you find that, you just have to keep trying and trying. You may not find it, like, like tomorrow or next week or next month, maybe next year. It could take years to do that, but whatever you do, whatever you want to do, you have to find it yourself. And and you could get help along the way. There's like people, there's like professional guidance counselors, you know, your teachers, your parents, your uh, the uh, your professors. They they'll help you. They'll help you explore that. They'll help you with that. Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. More important than heart. There has to be some some kind of balance there again. Uh, logic being that like this this should this should happen because they did this, but heart means that like you're willing to forgive like a person or you're willing to you know let their bygones be bygones. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a little bit disagree. There should be some sort of like s sympathy in that in those decisions but at the end of the day it's what it's what you decide to do and it's what you feel like it's the right choice keeping your options open is more important than having a to-do list i mean you have you have a specific to-do list every day but you, keeping your options open means that like if you decide to do something new with that with that option in the to-do list then you could then you could do that you could uh if you're if you want to do record a video game or something like what I'm doing right now, except it's not a video game. <laughs> you could do a skit before that, or you could do something at the end, like like a skit. 
<laughs> if you put, you put the skid from the beginning at the end or whatever, then yeah, you should, you should, you should, uh, so I'm gonna agree a little bit on that one. If your friend is sad about something, you are more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. I mean, I, I could do a little bit of both. You know, I, I, I support my friends whenever, whenever they're like down or they, they need someone to talk to. Uh, but I could suggest I could I may not know their life entirely, but I can I can suggest how You know how I would deal with it personally and see if they would agree with that or If it doesn't work in that situation because they tried it before so it, it, it's it, it's best to try to offer help to offer like ways to deal with the problem, but you're more like uh, I'm gonna say but I'm gonna say a little bit agree on that one, because I I am more of an emotional supporter than uh, to, to, than to suggest ways to deal with the problem. But that doesn't mean I can't do both. You rarely feel insecure. I mean, with with my with my personality, my body. I mean, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a little bit disagree. I I I think about those things pretty often, and I I will admit I'm not I haven't been uh, taking care of myself the best recently, but it's it's something I have to deal with and it's something, you know, I myself have to fix, like I said before. You have no difficulties coming up with a personal timetable and sticking to it. Uh, no, I disagree. <laughs> if I have a timetable, then I will fully like stray away from it and do something else and then finish everything at the last minute, which, I, which is something I should not do, but at least I'm aware of it. At least I'm telling you guys. You, sh you guys are, th are the ones to remind me, hey, you should pick up the slack. <laughs> uh, being right is more important than being cooperative when it comes to teamwork. Not really, that's, that really clashes with the definition of teamwork. Teamwork, uh, teamwork is something that should be, you know, talked out, right? It's something that shouldn't be like, you no, know, one person should be right. It should be the combination of people w with ideas to come up with one singular solution and therefore, you know, everybody contributed. So there's that. You think that everyone's views should be re respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not. People can have opinions. People are, people strongly, can strongly agree with something, uh, even though it seems like, like kind of, kind of stupid or kind of dumb, but they, that's what they believe. And I believe that people should be respected what, regardless of religion, regardless of race, regardless of, you know, gender or whatever. And, you know, everyone's view should be respected. People are, should be treated with, with respect, love one another. You feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. Definitely. I, when I hang out with my friends, I feel like, I feel so happy. And when I get back, I feel like, oh, I miss them. But now I get to, I get to, you know, use that, use that like energy that I had with them and, and spend it on what I like, what I like to do. Uh, which is, which doesn't mean I don't like hanging out with my friends. It's just that, you know, other things that I like. So I'm gonna agree on that one. You f frequently misplace your things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'll bring something, I'll bring like glasses to somewhere and then like, <laughs> when, when I come back, I'm like, where are they? And I check the car, I check, I check my desk, I check upstairs, I check a table over here. It, it's madness. I've lost many things. You see yourself as very emotionally stable. Emotionally stable. I mean, I said before, like my emotions kind of control me more than I can control them, but I I am able to control them. So I'm gonna say I disagree a little bit, but not a whole lot. Your mind always is always buzzing with unexplored ideas and plans. Yeah, I could I could I could see that because when you ha when you when you're doing something and you see something else being something else or someone else doing what you th what you were thinking you thought like oh man i wish i would have done that sooner but then but again just do it you, you shouldn't have to be waiting for that moment you would not call you would not call yourself a dreamer uh, uh. i mean we all dream of stuff right i'm gonna say disagree on that one i could dream a man a man can dream you know you usually find it difficult to relax when talking to in front of many people yeah yeah, agree. <laughs> uh, I I am nervous when I get to talk to other people. Like you know, I, I start to sweat and stuff like that, and I get really really nervous. But you know, after after a little while, once I get to know, once I 
have enough experience with it, then it, sh it really shouldn't be a problem. I shouldn't have any problems with what people think of me. But as it is right now, I still find it difficult to to talk to many people, let alone like a small group of people. Generally speaking, rely more on your experience than your imagination. E yes, yes, I'll say yes because past experience uh, sh shouldn't rely, shouldn't guide you through to future, you know, opportunities. But it's a nice like stepping stone. It's a nice place to. To see where you started from, and it could be good, and it could look good on a resume, you know? You worry too much about what other people think. Yes, wholeheartedly agree. I've said it many times before, I won't repeat it. I won't bore you, bore you guys with the stuff, but you know, just, I, I can't stop. If the room is full, you stay closer to walls, avoiding the center. Oh, heck yeah. I'm not the one to be partying and bumping in the center. If I, if it's something that I want to do with this, uh, like, with that one time, then sure, yeah, I'll do it. I'll just get in there and like, like dance or something and I'll talk to people, but as it stands, I don't like, I don't really like <laughs> being in crowded rooms in general. You have a tendency to procrastinate until there is not enough time to do everything. Yep, uh, yep, that, should, that shouldn't really be something I should be doing, uh, but you know, I should take initiative more often. That's something I should, that's something I keep telling myself, but I really never do but one day I'll get there. You feel very anxious in stressful situations. I have to agree, because there is there should be some control in that. You need to think logically and think the problem through. But it, in in most cases, I'm less like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? This, uh, and I make noises. <laughs> you believe that it is more rewarding to be liked by others than to be powerful. Yeah, yes, yes, I would say so. Because power, power means, powerful doesn't really mean anything. No one is really powerful. No one's better than others, than other people. No, not, not one person is better than this, than a person here. It shouldn't really be considered like this. But uh, you should, you should be, you should do unto others as what you would want to be done unto yourself. That way, that that way, people can you know respect you, and they can, then you can respect them back. You have always been interested in unconventional and ambiguous things. Oh yeah, of course. If you see something in in like books or movies that seem like you know really really cool, then you can't help but be like, oh man, I wish that that would be so cool in life, like a jetpack, a flying skateboard, a flying cars, freaking dinosaurs. We didn't even see dinosaurs when we were when we were when if when we we're all alive. Maybe we'll see them in the future when they re re replicate them. <laughs> but it's gonna be Jurassic Park, real life, Jurassic World, Jurassic Planet. That should be the next movie. Uh, you, should, you often take initiative in social situations. No, 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 no. I'm not the one that started. Like I said before, at the beginning, I do not take initiative. I do not start things. I just wait for other people to start them first. All right, oh, results. Yay, please wait. I am a meditator. I'm IN, INFP-T, okay? Mind, this trait determines how we interact with our environment. I'm 56% introverted, 44% extroverted. Uh, yeah, I'm like, when you look at me, you think like, oh, he's introverted? Yes, I'm introverted, because, introverted, because yeah, like I said, I like spending time with my friends, but you know, when I'm alone, I like having that personal time. I like having the time to myself playing video games and whatnot. I I don't like being out with new people, talking with them, but once they talk to me, I can get into it. Energy. Uh, this trait shows where we direct our mental energy. 63% intuitive and 37% observant. Yeah, I like, I guess so. <laughs> Nature. This trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. 27% thinking, 73% feeling. Yeah, I'm a pretty feely person. <laughs> I tend to base my judgments towards my feelings than thinking about it, uh, but that shouldn't really be the case, honestly. Tactics. This trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. 27% judging, 73% prospect prospecting. I mean, yes. Ju I, don't ju I don't really judge the like, situations or people based on like, you know, my first look at them. I just, I take, I take the time to get to know them and get to, and know what the situation is about before I make any decisions. Identity. This trait underpins all others, showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. 34% assertive, assertive, 66% turbulent. Okay, I don't really know what that means. Start reading. Oh, 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 okay. 
There's a lot of things. Mediator personalities are true idealists, always looking for the hints of good and even the worst of people and events, searching for ways to make things better. While they may be perceived as calm, reserved, or even shy, mediators have an inner flame and passion that can truly shine. Would you guys agree with that? Would you guys agree with that statement? Comprising just 4% of the population. Wow. The risk of feeling misunderstood is unfortunately high for the mediator personality type. But when they find like-minded people to spend their time with, the harmony can they feel will be a fountain of joy and inspiration. Yeah, I would, I would say so. If I find something that really makes me happy, then I'm just like, oh, I really can't wait to put this into like YouTube. I put this into my work or something. Being a part of the diplomat role group, mediators are guided by their principles rather than by, than by logic. Logic, analysts, excitement, explorers, or practicality, sentience. When deciding how to move forward, they will look to honor, beauty, morality, and virtue. Mediators are led by the purity of their intent, not rewards and punishment. People who share the mediator personality type are people are proud of this uh, quality, and rightly so. But not everyone understands the drive behind these feelings, and it can lead to isolation. Hmm, interesting. That maybe that's why I feel kind of like I left out from other people. We know what we are, but know not what we may be. At their best, these qualities enable mediators to communicate deeply with others, easily speaking in metaphors and parables, and understanding and creating symbols to share their ideas. Fantasy worlds in particular fascinate mediators more than any other personality type. The strength of their visionary communication style lends itself, toward, lends itself well to creative works, and it, and it comes as no surprise that many famous mediators are poets, writers, and actors. Understanding themselves and their place in the world is important to mediators, and they explore these ideas by projecting themselves into other work. Hmm, interesting. Putting putting your own your own personality into the work. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Da -da -da. Mediator's ability with a language doesn't stop with their native tongue either. As with most people who share the diplomat uh, personality types, they are considered gifted when it comes to learning a second or third language. Their gift for communication also lends itself well to mediators' desire for harmony, a, re a recurring theme with diplomats, and helps them to move forward as they find their calling. Hmm. I'll listen to many people, but talk to few. Unlike their extroverted cousins, though, mediators will focus their attention on just a few people, a single worthy cause. Spread too thinly, they'll run out of energy, and even become dejected and overwhelmed by all the bad in the world that they can't fix. It, that, this is a sad sight for mediators' friends, who will come to depend on their rosy outlook. Yeah, that's that's true. And when people when you see people that are usually like upbeat and like happy, and then you see them like you know all sad and depressed and they don't want to talk to people, then then other people will feel sad too, and th they they'll, they'll they'll want to help you a whole lot, uh, you know, depending on the on the friends that you have. But it it really is like I focus on like a main group of people, and I I don't want to. You know, spread my options or spread my spread my spread my my uh, effort to all my friends like too thin. Like yeah, I've talked to a lot of people, but there are some people that I talk to, I still talk to to this day, and those are the people I want to make happy. I want to make them laugh. I want to you know just hang out with them. If they are not careful, mediators can lose themselves in their quest for good and neglect the day-to-day -day up upkeep that demands that life demands. Mediators often drift into th deep thought. Yes, enjoying contemplating and hypothetical and the contemplating the hypothetical, sorry, and the philo philosophical more than any other personality type. That's very, very true. Left unchecked, mediators may start to lose touch, withdraw into hermit mode, and it can take a great deal of energy from the, their per friends or partner to bring them back to the real world. Luckily, like the flowers in spring, mediator's affection, creativity, altru altruism, and idealism will always come back, rewarding them and those they love, perhaps not with logic and utility, but with a world view that inspires compassion, kindness, and beauty wherever they go. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, William Shakespeare, oh. Oh, these are the other mediators. J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, Bjork, Johnny Depp, Julia Roberts, Lisa Kudrow, Tom Hiddleston, uh, Alicia Keys, and F Frodo Baggins, really? Frodo, Frodo. Anne, Anna Green Gables, Fox Smaller, Emily uh, Poulain, Arwen, C Sybil Branson, Lance Sweets, and Constant Constantine Levin. Huh. Interesting. There's other. Oh wow. Okay, let me let me look through these real quick. Idealistic seek 
and value harmony, open-minded and flexible, very creative, passionate and energetic, dedicated and hardworking. My weaknesses, too idealistic, take their idealism too far, setting themselves up for disappointment as for disappointment as again and again evil things happen in the world. That's true, I guess. Too altruistic, see themselves as selfish but only because they want to give so much more than they are able to. This becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy as they try to push themselves to commit to a chosen cause or person, forgetting to take care of the needs of, of others in their lives and especially themselves. I would say that that is very true of me. I, I think of myself as selfish because I because I want because I need validation from others or I want others to think uh, better of me, but I don't think about the other people that you know already feel that way towards me and have said it towards me a bunch of times. So, let's see, impractical. Hmm. I guess Dis dislike dealing with data. I mean, I hate data management. Does that count? Uh, take things personally. Often take challenges and criticisms personally rather than an inspiration. Mm, I guess so. Difficult to get to know. I am I difficult to get to know? Do I am I that hard to read? I don't know. There's a lot of other uh, sections to this to this uh, results page, but I'm just gonna go to the conclusion now. Few personality types are as poetic and kind-hearted as mediators. Their altruism and vivid imagination allow meditators to over overlook many challenge challenging obstacles, more often than not brightening the lives of those around them. Mediators' creativity is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Yet mediators can be easily tripped up in areas where idealism and altruism are more of a liability than an asset. Whether it is finding or keeping a partner, making friends, reaching dazzling heights, or the career ladder, or f planning for the future, mediator mediators need to put in a conscious effort to develop their weaker traits and additional skills. So that's it. That's the 16 personalities quiz. I am the mediator, INFP-T. INFP There's different personality types here, like architect, log logician, commander, stuff like that. And you could go through each of, each of these uh, yourself. But yeah, that's it. Uh, you, now you know a little, uh, a little bit more of who I am. Not, not a whole lot. It, this doesn't really set in stone who I am as a person. It just based based on multiple other studies and tests that they got this idea. So let me know what. You, let me know uh, if you took this test already, and let me know what you got down in the comments below, and uh, whether you agree with my results or not. Whether they pertain to me as a person or they're just complete baloney. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like, comment, share with a friend, consider subscribing, hit the bell down there, and become a notifier. And until then, fight the bees, my friends. Stay awesome, have a great day. See you all next time. Bye.